you guys, Elle here. Today we're gonna do a video about the runes and our chakras, or chakras, chakra, chakra, whatever. Um, yeah, if, if you're anything like me, it's something that you've come across kind of all over the place. People like to definitely, and I've done the same thing myself, um, associate certain runes with, with certain chakras. Um, you know, for healing purposes, for ritual work, for magical work, for whatever. Um, most of the stuff that I've come across in my time anyway has been, you know, it's, it's this one particular rune from randomly from the, from the fourth arc is, seems to fit really good with this chakra, um, and so on and so forth. Um, I, I have a way of, of looking at things that I honestly, I've never, if anybody has seen it out there, please let me know. I've, I've never seen it published or, or on a website or anything, and it's really a very, very simple idea. Um, which I, I, I remember the moment, actually, that I, I realized that this could be a thing. There was sort of, actually there were two things that happening, sort of happening at the same time. Um, the first thing that happened was I was introduced to um, John Volo Melchizedek in like 2000, 2001, something like that, and was reading um, both volumes of the Ancient Secrets of the Flower of Life. Amazing, mind-blowing shit, love it. Uh, and at the same time, I was really, really into like my rune studies and, and examining the, the shapes of the staves for like the very first time and imagining them as if they were energy moving like, like Edward Thorson talks about a lot and was reading all that stuff at the same time. Anyway, I came across this, this section um, of the book right here. I'll, I'll zoom in on a second. But basically, it talks about um, two different ways of looking at our our energy bodies, our, our chakra systems. Um, and one is a, a 13 chakra system, and the other is basically the classic seven chakras that we're all used to, but he calls it an eight chakra system. So right off the bat, as soon as I saw eight chakras, I was like, well, first of all, I got a little angry and uncomfortable, just like we do when we hear something that <laughs> sounds foreign to us at first, right? We're like, ooh, I don't like that. Um, but the more I read and, and started to understand, it, it really is basically the same thing that we're used to. Um, only it makes more sense this way. <laughs> uh, what it does is the, the eight chakras then fit, and, and the 13, I'll talk about that just a little bit here too, but it, it fits perfectly on onto an octave. You know, there's, there's seven notes, is that what they're called? Seven notes in an octave, right? Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. But why don't we ever stop there, right? We always do the next do to sort of complete things. It's really the beginning note of the next, you know, higher octave or lower octave. Uh, and John Volo Melchizedek says that, I've heard this sort of corroborated from other sources and things, um, but like that, that eighth chakra actually is about a, a hand length sitting sort of right above your head up here. Um, so it's it's not quite your crown, it's not your pineal, it's not your third eye, it's um, it's a whole, it's the start of the next octave, you know, the start of the next level, the next dimension, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, so I came across this whole eight thing and my rune head was like, eight, there's eight, there's three eights, there's phrase eight, there's hoggle eight, oh, that's cool. Uh, and, and simultaneously, I remember through the, the stave shape study that I was doing, noticing this other thing with, with these two specific runes that made me think that there is an association um, between the rune row, the eight, exactly how it's laid out, and our, and our chakra system. And it was really the, the third rune, the thorasaz rune, where it's like the straight line with the, the B sort of coming out of it right from the center. Um, and then looking at the very end of that Freya Freya's eight, uh, the very last rune, Wunyo, is the same up and down line with like a V coming out right at the top, which sort of reminded me of an Ankh, which is, you know, uh, this enlightened halo. It's this opening of the, of the upper chakras and the, and the force or the shape that that sort of creates. That's what, that's what an Ankh is for me anyway. Uh, and it resembled that. So at that moment, I was starting to see that, that there might be a relationship there. You know, that third rune right from your solar plexus, the energy is clearly there. Um, it's something I was, I know I've talked about it before when I talked about astral projection um, and invoking that Thoris as rune, that's exactly where that energy 
from both sides and zap like right out from the center. So that sort of proved it to myself later on. Um, but yeah, and and the fact that there are even three, uh, three, three eighths, you know, there is something that's spoken about in the the Eastern f philosophy way of looking at your chakras, right? You have those three like nerve, those three channels, right, that run up and they spiral around each other. One sort of going straight up, and the other two zoopy zoopy zoopy. Um, <laughs> I make sound effects sometimes. Uh, uh, what are they called? The Ida on the left, Pingala on the right, and your Sushumna channel right in the center. Actually, here, this is from um, a journal that I, I just started, but I'm trying to put all the information together. I'll write out all the runes and their chakra associations and stuff below, but basically I sort of have it written out ah, up there, Ida, Pingala, uh, and Sushumna, and then it literally goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which correspond to the seven or eight chakras. This is also from the ancient secret of the flower of life. Wah. You see that down there? It shows the three channels. It shows five channels actually, but he says three are the main ones, the two outer and the one central channel. Um, and you can see they're labeled with the parts of, uh, of a female's anatomy, sort of where they start from. And then that's that energy wending its way up through the 13 chakra system. And then also, I thought it was so fascinating, the, the 13 chakra system here too, there's like one on your chin, but then there's also these three, can you see that? They actually, he says they exist on the, the surface of the body, so you have your third eye, you have your 45 degrees, and then you have the crown of the head, uh, and depending on where the uh, pineal gland, the pineal eye is, is directing its energy, it'll start, when it's sort of activated, it'll start first out through the third eye, out then through like the 45 degrees and then straight up to heaven or whatever uh, through the crown. Isn't that a cool idea? Oh, I love that. So let me show you guys one more thing here. This is the picture in, um, in the Flower of Life that first sort of did it for me. There we go. I hope that's sort of legible. Um, yeah, but that's the 13 chakra system on one side, which includes like, I like how you use the, the, the piano here, because you can see that just includes that entire scale plus all the black keys. And then on the other side over there where you see Godhead, pineal, third eye, throat, and so on and so forth, that's just looking at things from a different perspective, like with just the white keys. Um, both of these systems can can be perfectly valid and, you know, depending on which which way of looking at things you wanna you wanna look at? Uh, I think they're both really really fascinating to look at. Uh, but you will notice that there is some differences here between uh, sort of where we look at the differences. Really, are only up in here uh, instead of the the seventh chakra being the crown. I think he has it as the pineal gland, and uh, you know. But basically. When I am working with my, my rune associations for the chakras, um, I, I like physically working with, like doing a healing and using Galder and all that kind of stuff, um, I tend to use the, the classic locations uh, for things. So like the seventh chakra is literally the crown right on top of the head. Uh, and then the and then the third eye, which sort of includes the the pineal gland and, and all that, uh, and then the eighth chakra, the or the eighth rune from every eight uh, would be sitting that hand length up here. Um, the seventh is the crown, and the eighth becomes like the godhead, uh, and that would be what the 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 last runes from each eight. You have Wunyo, you have Sowilo, and you have Othala. Like I said, I'll write them. I'll write them all down below. It's. I'm not gonna go through one by one and give you why it works, but it really does fucking work. It's. It's amazing. Basically, you have three runes associated with each chakra. Okay, so I'm gonna take you through real quick. I'm not gonna talk about every single one of this video. It'll get crazy long. Uh, but basically, you start at your your root chakra, your base chakra, your muladhara chakra, uh, and the three runes associated associated with this chakra would be Feyu. Hagalaz, 
and Tewas. And they all fucking work for this root. They all sort of come at it from a different angle. And yes, they have other divinatory meanings. Uh, but you could just spend a little time with them and you will see they just, they fucking fit. Um, and then your second chakra, your Svatastana, your spleen chakra, your sex chakra uh, becomes Urus. Now these come on. Uh, and Berkana, very much associated with with sex and creation, and this uh, this you know it's the goddess root, right? This uh, gestation and sexual energy, the whole thing. Uh, and then you move on to your third chakra, your Manipura, your solar plexus, your will, associated with yellow. All the colors are applicable here. Um, but you have your your Thorisas, your Isa, which I think is very interesting there. And, and your Awas. Uh, number four, your heart chakra. I think these are really, really fascinating here. You have Ansus for your Anahata, your heart chakra, Ansus, Yira, and Manas. I know I mentioned the Manas rune in, um, what was that video I did? The runes and the, oh, my, my tarot rune correspondences. Uh, and this is, this is why Manas fits at the heart chakra because it's the fourth rune of an eight. Uh, and I just think that especially Manas was really powerful for me there. It's the rune of humanity. If you're awakened and living in your heart, you're fully human. There's, there's a lot of interesting, interesting things to look at there. Uh, moving along though, number, uh, your, your, your fifth chakra, your Vasuda, your throat chakra, uh, is associated with Rido then, Awas, and Lagus. Interesting enough there, actually, the Lagus rune is literally in the shape of, of all the other runes right there. Uh, and then your, your sixth chakra, your Ajna chakra, your third eye associated with the pineal glands. Some people place them in different places or look at them as existing in different places. But I, for me personally, I do. I use, that's all sort of one general area for me. Uh, but that's associated with, get this. Kenaz, hello, Kenaz, the torch lighting your way, opening your third eye. Uh, Perthro, which also has that shape of, of opening, and uh, and then Ingwaz, literally the shape of a diamond or the shape of an eye, you know, is falling at the at the third eye. I thought that was fascinating. Uh, and then our seventh chakra, um, the crown chakra, your Sahasrara, Sahasrara. I butcher shit. Um, becomes uh, Gabo, all geese, and dagas. All those runes feel like they are in like a, a crossing or, or a changing or a moving to a higher state sort of a thing. Um, Gabo, dagas, especially, and, and all geese. They... <laughs> I'm not gonna get into it, but they work. Uh, and then our, our, what I'm calling the, the godhead, that eighth chakra that sort of exists up here, but it's part of the next octave, um, is uh, Wunyo, Sowilo, and Othala, your, your eighth rune from every eight. I mean, that's sort of a giveaway too. You can see this, this journey being made in every eight. You know, you start at one place and you end in this highly exalted sort of a place, you know, Wunyo, this joy and happiness. And then Sowilo, literally the sun, like what higher goal could you have? Uh, and then Othala, Odin, union, family, everything, the universe, like the universe card, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the world card. Um, so in theory, you could 100% do the same thing with the tarot and look at it like that because in, in the tarot, you can see that same journey taking place. You start, if you break it up into three sets of seven, um, like we're doing in Living the Tarot, actually, you can see three journeys being made start to finish. Um, I think that there is interesting correspondences there when you line that up with your chakras too. Uh, this feels... I don't know, it feels like more intentional with the runes, like it's a secret message that was waiting for us to be discovered, you know? Uh, and I think that this this idea of, of energy bodies and energy bodies, this idea of, of, you know, your chi, your energy, your kundalini, all that sort of stuff was very well known to, to 
to the Norse, to the Norse pagans and their, their cosmology. You know, they, they speak of hvels, wheels in the body, and, and they have their own, their own names for, for like what we would call chi or, or energy. You know, it's and, and, um, and odor or od. It's, yeah. This isn't like trying to force two systems together, really. You know, I think that this information uh, and this knowledge is just, it, it exists in the foot arc. It's there. Uh, and having sat with it for so long now, I feel like, duh, how could you not see that? You know, it just, it feels so blunt. So one of the ways that I will actually use this information is uh, is is in like healings um, I have created I took the three I'll show you my stones I I have I've created um, bind runes for each chakra basically utilizing the three runes that are associated with each chakra uh, which is really cool. I then, I, I have them in my books and, and, and whatnot, but I also put them onto some stones. I painted them onto stones and use them on myself and on my wife. I'm not like a, a Reiki practitioner or anything, but I will work with the energy. I will <clears throat> clear the chakras and activate the chakras and, um, you know, it's, why not? Let's promote that healing. Let's, <laughs> let's get those energy bodies in tip-top shape. Uh, so yeah, let me show you guys my, um, my little bind runes. I think what I'm gonna do actually is, my, my wife's been feeling a little under the weather lately, so I would like to do a, a chakra cleansing, uh, treatment, sort of a session with her. Uh, she's a, a massage therapist by trade and she has a, an office in the back here with a, a massage table, so I always have access to a good table for doing work like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, we'll film that later and uh, I'll make another video and show you guys this runic galder chakra healing thing that that I enjoy doing. Anyway, this is the first stone. They're on like uh, like those lava rocks that they use in like hot stone massage. Uh, they they hold on to the heat, they hold on to the cold very well. But yeah, that is my own personal bind rune that I made for um, Tewas and uh, Tewas, Hagalas, and uh, Feiyu. You having fun trying to find them all? <laughs> I don't use the old or the newer form, I guess I could say, of Hagalas, where it looks more like an H. And uh, all my personal workings, I use that classic. Um, what do you call it? They call it like a hail shape or something. Um, but yeah, he's he's clearly, he's down the X down there. Uh, most of them aren't super, super stylized. Like, I, I like to clearly see, you know, dress it up a little bit, but I like to clearly see the three runes in, in these guys. So this is uh, my second stone. This is Uru's, uh, Nauthi's, and Berkana. And when I place it on myself or on the body, this one would sit um, just a bit below the navel at that at that sexual ovary sort of a center. Okay, and then you have um, here is the, the my third bind rune there for healing at the uh, for whatever purposes. Actually, it really doesn't matter. Like sometimes I'll just use one. I don't have to use them all and do a whole chakra cleansing. Like there's a million different uses I have for these guys. Uh, but yeah, this is devoted to the, the Manipura, the solar plexus chakra, and it's Thurisa's, uh, Isa and Ewas. I love that bind rune, he looks really cool, right? <laughs> and then the fourth one, your heart chakra looks like this, and it is Yira, Manas, and, um, Ansus. And then the fifth chakra, your throat chakra, uh, this is Ewas. Rido and uh, and Lagus. You can feel the energies in these guys. They're so good. This is your sixth chakra, your Ajna chakra, and it is Kenaz, Perthro, and Ingwas. Right? That's pretty. <laughs> and then your seventh. This is uh, your Dagas, your uh, All Geese. And your gapo. Your sahasrara, your crown chakra. 
And then this is the, the simplest binder. And actually, oh my god, I almost dropped it. <laughs> this is all your eight. So it's Othala, um, Sowilo, and Munyo. And um, if I place this on someone laying down or on myself laying down, this is the one that exists, that hand length. Um, above. It's the beginning of the next octave. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. <laughs> so yeah, them is my bind rune stones, my chakra bind rune stones. And when I use them, I'll use the galter and, and say the names and that whole little thing I do. Uh, and yeah, I think that'll be a really, a really cool video. I'm very happy to share that with you guys. Uh, maybe give you guys some ideas. On, on how you can sort of utilize this sort of knowledge. I think it's great to make these connections, uh, but when, you know, it's something you can actually internalize and can help heal you, and it's it becomes powerful, useful stuff then, and I think that that's important. So I'm definitely gonna make more videos down the line also talking about a lot of the stuff that I just briefly, briefly mentioned from like the, the, the Flower of Life teachings uh, and, all, and all that. It's really fucking fascinating stuff you know he says even your chakra system is just the the unfolded star tetrahedron that is where you start even it's these original eight cells when you're first sort of created at the very beginning or in that shape and then they unfold in your body and they exist around you in the star tetrahedron shape also he says like there's chakras these energy centers or these veils as the Norse would call them uh, you know, existing at the at the corners of these these shapes that literally exist in energy fields uh, around our bodies. It's so so good. You know, we are <clears throat> we are our, we are ourselves, our own little trees of life. You know, we're we're our own little mini Yggdrasil or a, or even a mini Kabbalistic tree of life. Um, those those worlds exist within us. Uh, the same way that uh, they exist in the in the macrocosm, in the grand scheme of things. Yggdrasil having uh, the wells at the bottom and the serpent even coiled in the roots of Yggdrasil, gnawing at its roots, is, is a kundalini serpent coiled up at the base of your spine, you know? You are the tree. You know, we are all Odin. We're all All-Father. All right, I'm going to stop getting preachy. <laughs> uh, yeah, hang tight for the other video with uh, a, a chakra balancing, bind rune cleansing. I don't know what the fuck we're going to call it. Uh, but keep an eye out for that. I'll get that up. And then if you guys have any other ways of associating chakras with, uh, with the tarot cards, chakras with the runes, or whatever other systems uh, that you might work with too, I'd be very interested to hear. I love... You know me, I love me some correspondences. They're so fun. <laughs> so yeah, please, by all means, make a video, post a comment. Let's, uh, let's talk. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.